Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is World Wonders by Arcane Wonders. It's a one to five player game that takes roughly about 70 minutes to play and is for ages 14 and up. And in the game World Wonders, you are going to basically be creating your own civilization creating roads that then lead to buildings and buildings which then create monuments all on your own player board. This is a tile placement, tile purchasing game where new buildings and new tiles come out throughout every single round. And as the game goes progressively through nine rounds, when the final finished product is complete, you're gonna tally up each player's board and whoever has the most points is the winner. Will you accue the best monuments in the best possible locations to create structures on your board or your opponents? Find out in the game World Wonder as we get into the setup, how to play, and of course, my review. To begin the setup for the game, World Wonders, the first thing you do is decide how many players are playing the game. Based on the number of players playing the game is what uh, the different types of buildings you're going to have, as well as the different player markers, etc., etc. I've got the setup for four players, but I'm only showing you two boards. How it works is each player is going to get a board. This board is going to have an A side and a B side. It doesn't matter which one you choose, just make sure that everyone selects the same one. Then a resource tracker board for each player as well. Take out the tokens in yellow, white, green, red, and blue respectively and place them down onto the respective icons so that they're all at zero. Give each single player a reference card. The reference card has two sides. One explains how you can place tiles and the other explains what everything is worth in the game. After you've got your main two boards and your reference, you're then going to get a free long road tile. This is a tile you're going to place out at the beginning of the first turn of the game. Now, additionally, there's going to be extra boards. There's the main purchasing board and a board for four players and a board for five. I have the fourth player board set up, so it's adjacent to the long board here. And you're going to take each of the specific buildings and place them down on their respective locations. They're actually gonna have a little icon indicating the type of building that it should be and where you need to place it. And I have all of these buildings set aside so you can see them here. The five player version is over here. Sadly, we're not playing five players, so I'm setting this aside. Take the long road tiles and place them in an area, as well as the short road tiles and place them in an area. And of course, towers and these little uh, loans that you can take out throughout the game. Then place one of each of the buildings underneath their respective game boards, uh, right where the location of where you would pick them up is. So I've got this little L tile, I'll flip it over and place it in the little L uh, space down below. Then, depending on the number of players playing the game, this is a four player game, so we're gonna have two long road tiles that are separate, as well as two sets of short roads. A set of short roads is two small two by ones and a one by one tile. So you'll get three tiles in this little kind of bundle. You're also gonna get one tower to place for every single round. The rest of the towers will remain set aside. Then we're playing the basic mode for the game. So we're talking about our little wonders here, our little monuments, and we're gonna deal out three of them. Each of the cards represents a monument, which you can go ahead and place on the card once you've dealt out the three monuments so that everybody can see them and they're within reach of all players. After that, just go ahead and set aside all the rest of the monuments within reach of all players. Take the first and second player markers and place them down on the top left hand side of the main game board. And each player is going to be randomly assigned a slot uh, in this little order tray, which will determine the round order of play. The extra stuff, like these extra player resource tokens you probably won't need, you can go ahead and put them back in the bag, uh, as well as the uh, player icon, any player uh, tokens you have or boards you're not using, you can go ahead and set those aside as well. And then, you're ready to begin. Okay, so how do you play World Wonders? Well, it's played in 10 rounds, I know I said 9, and in a round you're basically going to do one of two things on your turn. A, pass, which is you're done, or B, you can choose to buy. When you choose to buy, you're going to be actually spending a buy action uh, to purchase any of the things available to you on this chart here. Uh, the first thing that you can buy is a large road tile. The large road tiles will cost you one gold and you can place them adjacent to any other road on your board. And the bottom of each player's board is actually going to have a road where you can start the game. Additionally, you can choose to purchase a set of small roads. These roads are gonna be two two by ones and a one by one, which just like the large road, it'll cost you $1, but you're going to get all three of them. 
The next thing you can choose to purchase is player order. There is a first and second player order marker. You can spend one gold to take that location and at the end of the round, uh, you're going to be able to move your marker to that position, uh, kind of changing the order of play and then placing back this little uh, first player marker there. Um, and that can be done with the second player as well, just one goal. The next one is your tower. A tower can be placed adjacent to anything that you've built and towers are great because they will allow you to build roads off of them. So they do not actually have to connect to a road. You can actually take a road and place it next to a tower that's connected to a building because roads typically can only be attached to other roads. That is gonna be two for the tower. The next one is buildings. Buildings have a set cost. The top portion of these boards here explain not only how many buildings are left in the stack, but also what they cost. The ones below it are what you can purchase for the round. And so if I want this little uh, tea tile, it will cost me three gold and I can take this and place it on my board. These specific buildings must be placed adjacent to roads. There's a bunch of rules for, for tile placement in the game, but the main aspects are you cannot place a building, typically speaking, over water. It must encompass an area on the game board that has no other pieces. Um, and it has to meet the requirements of the specific type of tile or building that you're placing. Each of these guys have their own specific requirements, all the different monuments. The buildings must be placed by roads. Roads have to connect with other roads and the tower has to be connected to anything on your game board that will then let you build roads off of it. The last thing you can purchase is going to be your monument. Well, the monument not only costs gold, but it also has requirements like the Parthenon is going to require you to do three things in order to take this building here. One is it has to be adjacent to a natural resource, has to be connected to a road, and a building that is marked B. When you purchase one of these monuments, you'll have to spend all the remaining gold that you have for the round. So that will basically end your, uh, your turns for the round if you purchase very early. So how you choose to spend your gold is going to matter in this game, especially if you want monuments. Whenever you purchase a monument, you're always going to replace it with a new monument and you'll take that specific marker and place it on top of that monument area to say that it's been, spent, been added. And whenever you purchase a building, they do not get refilled until the end of the round. So once you purchase one of these things here, you're then going to pass and the next player will purchase and next player will purchase and purchasing will continue until every single player has passed or been forced to pass because they have no gold remaining. Um, and that will end the round. At the end of the round, you're going to refresh. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna take every single tile here that has not been built and move it off to the side, including towers and uh, roads. Then you're gonna replace them. You're gonna add roads and or small roads uh, packages, uh, as well as all the new tiles are gonna be flipped over. You're going to replace the turn order here, and then you're going to increase your gold count uh, back to zero so you can spend seven once again. And always remember that these specific buildings here are always going to be out no matter what. So when a player buys one of these wonders, one of these monuments, you're gonna place one out instantly. And that's how the game works. On your turn, you're gonna start with one of these long roads and you're going to be able to place that long road down after your buy action. And um, then you're gonna place whatever you bought as well. And you'll pass and the next player is gonna go and they'll take their starting uh, long road piece and they will place that out as well as a purchase action up until the point where the game is going to end. At the end of 10 rounds, you're gonna tally up the points in the game. The first thing that you're going to do is you're gonna tally up any points that in fact, I have a little handy dandy cheat sheet here so I don't forget. You can tally up your population. So when you place your buildings down on this board here, it's going to give you resources. The resources are printed on the buildings and there is a variety of resources. There's, popu there's the population, there's these leaf, there's some things like natural resources, there's pottery, and then there's mechanical. When you place a building down, depending on what it says on there, is how many you move up on this track of that specific color. And whenever you pass a little white head for population, you'll move your population tracker up. And you'll continually move all of these little guys up throughout the game. Uh, you are going to score if you actually hit the last one, two, or three rings of the population track, scoring you one, two, and three points respectively. The next way you score is going to be whatever resource of the three that you have, green, red, and blue, has the least. So if you've got five and five for green and for red and two for blue, you'll score two points. The next thing you're going to score is your monuments. Each monument is going to have a specific benefit, whether it gives you population or resources, or it's going to give you a, a victory point. You'll score those in addition. 
And you're also going to check to see uh, what of your buildings have been covered. Uh, so what I mean by covered is when you place down a building tile, as long as it, is a ha it has a road or other buildings completely surrounding it, that will score you an additional point. And that will be for every single regular building that you place throughout the game. The last thing is your natural resources. You can place over them, but if you don't, at the end of the game, each one that you don't place over will score you an extra victory point. And whoever has the most points at the end of 10 rounds is the winner. There's a number of other ways the game can end. One way being if you reach the very end of the population track, that'll just end the game. Or another way being that if you run out of building tiles, the game will simply end as well. There's some other nuances I want to talk about. I'll cover a lot of it in the review portion, but I just want to give you the basic idea of the game. On your turn, you buy or you pass, and when you have no gold, you're forced to pass. Each player is going to do this until they have nothing left or choose to put, not, no longer play anything, in which case you'll refresh everything. You'll add new buildings out, add new roads, add one of these little towers here, and continue for 10 rounds. And that's it. That's the game, World Wonders. Okay, what do I think about it? And some caveats. Caveat number one, there is a single player mode to this game and there are single player cards in the box. I did not play it. I typically do not play single player variants for games that are not just specifically single player, but it does exist and I heard it's pretty good. The next thing is I have the expansion here. I have the Mo Mundo expansion, which gives you uh, nine new monuments that you can add to the deck and just simply play it with those new monuments. There's also a separate deck that you can use, which will allow you to place two of the old monuments and two of the new monuments out, which will allow you to buy kind of whatever ones you want. And um, that's simply just a, car a, a set that you can just simply add or kind of have a unique little variant to it. And like I said before, whenever you purchase a building, there's going to be icons on it. Those icons are going to give you population as you move them up across the track here. Population will give you victory points and make the game potentially end early. And so as you start placing them down, you want to cover them, uh, surround them, I should say. You'll also want to keep track of your points. And luckily, if you forget one point or another, which I have done actually consistently throughout this game, I'll just place one of the buildings down and not gain the resources. You can check your game board at any point in time to make sure that you are actually accurate. If you've got six green on this board and you only have four on your track, just give yourself two more because you probably should have done it and you probably just forgot. Always remember to at the end of every round, you're always going to go back to zero gold, which you can then spend. Personally, for me, I like to start with seven and then spend and go down to zero and every round just simply go back to seven and spend again. But it's really up to you. I don't think it really matters. And of course, don't forget that you always start with an elongated road, a long road at the very beginning of the first round that will allow you to then place buildings down onto your specific mat. What's also cool about this game is there is a flip side. I, th I think you should probably start with this one here with a small little river in the middle, a little lake, I should say. The other side has a river that goes across half the map. You could choose to play with that one or the other. It really doesn't matter, but you do need to play with the same one if all players, you know, all players need to play with the same one. You can't mix and match this stuff. Some people also forget that they have this little tower here and every round one new one comes out. You're never gonna have two in a round. You're simply gonna, whenever you end a round, anything that hasn't been bought moves away and new ones come. And that is a way to symbolize the end of each of the rounds and the beginning of a new one. I also like to show off all the little monuments. I have them off to the side, so you can do that as well, or you can just put them in a bag somewhere. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a super fun little game. It's very simple. It's just basically purchase or pass, continue up until the point where you're out of gold, and then process the round and start again. It's a longer game though. This actually does take about 70 to, I would say up to 90 minutes if you're playing with five players. And the way I would suggest to reduce that time is right after I have purchased uh, a tile, a building, a monument or whatever, uh, let the other player, as you kind of fiddle with your board, go ahead and take their turn. There's really no reason, and you can't really affect any player when you're placing down on your main game board, so it's a good like way to kind of speed the game along where the first portion of the purchasing uh, is going to kind of progress a little faster when when you're placing the next player is purchasing and and then you'll just continue like that it's it's quick it's simple it's straightforward uh, there's very few negatives I have with the game the one main one I can think of is sometimes with these monuments they have requirements on them and they are kind of confusing now of course I have three here that are perfectly simple explaining that you need to be next to a road and an M building and an H building or next to a resource or next to a river but there are a few other ones that were a little more confusing for me 
um, and I suggest checking the rule book. They have de detailed explanations as to what these things do and the requirements, and each of these cards has the name, what the monument looks like, what you get when you place it, and how big it is, and what it needs to be adjacent to whenever you choose to, to place it. You're never gonna have the same monument come out through any of the games, uh, so basically all, what you see is what you get, and there's a bunch of wonderful little monuments here. Scoring is also relatively important in this game, making sure that you surround your buildings with roads and other buildings. Make sure to condense your populace so that you can score as many points as possible, choosing monuments that are best for you, not necessarily just because it's a monument. Sometimes it's not worth taking a monument over another building because the building might give you population, which could score you an extra bonus victory point, uh, whereas a monument may not. And so each of them have kind of their own unique little function. I would like it as well as if someone was able to spend money to remove the monuments and place new ones out that might be a variant but i'm not super certain but that would be kind of nice to be able to kind of refresh these guys because they stay out until somebody has purchased them and sometimes they're just really difficult to place maybe it might require you to place over water or whatever and everybody's water spaces are all stuck uh, unable to place that thing and so it just sits out for a long time I would actually appreciate being able to remove that guy. I think a house rule could be in order. If no one can play it, it just gets removed. But overall, quality of the game is excellent. Arcane Wonders did a great job with this game. All the little monuments are beautiful. They're fun. They look unique. They're all kind of their own. Your, your board is always going to have your own unique feel to it because of the colors of the buildings, the type of monuments you're going to get. You're never, never ever going to have the same board twice. And there's a whole bunch of things that make your life easier. Understanding the play player order, understanding your resource values, and even when you forget something, it's going to be directly on your game board, what monuments they have, and you'll also take the cards when you buy them, so you'll remember the, what you score at the end of the game. There's loans as well that you can take, which if you do not uh, pay back at the end of the game, you'll lose victory points, but it's a way to give you additional money, and you'll have to pay it back well, with a little interest, and if you don't, you lose points, so they're kind of dangerous. I've never taken them, but you might want to. Artwork for the game is excellent. This is kind of a top-down, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Populous, the old N Super Nintendo game, or like, uh, I can't I can't think of another one. I guess like Civilization, where you're like looking down upon your kingdom as you build it. That's what this game feels like, with beautiful quality. All the boards are nice and thick. Even the tiles are nice and thick as well. They don't bend, which is nice, but they're small and flexible and easy to kind of place down. I'm not worried about breaking anything throughout the game. Uh, some of these little guys are a little glued, which you might be able to notice. <laughs> Sometimes the ones with like multiple steps, you can see kind of some glue lines, but it's not a super big deal. High quality overall though, beautiful design, really simple, really straightforward, something that's very easy to teach and understand. And sitting down, if you've played a game that's a tile placement before, you'll, you'll get this one pretty quickly. Uh, learning what is best is gonna be based on what type of board you build. And with the, the, the ability to kind of be flexible in this game, I think you're going to love World Wonders. I did, I'm keeping this game for a, a, a while at least. I'm gonna leave it in my collection because I wanna play it a few more times with some friends. But uh, I just, after playing this, like I think I played this like three times, I was already super enamored with it. I love it. I love the idea of having extra monuments. I even want more of them because they're super fun, but there is quite a bit too. When we play the five players the first time and there are tons of monuments over all players' boards. So yes, excellent, excellent game. This is a nine out of 10. If not for just a little bit of confusion with the monuments, I would have given this a straight 10 out of 10, but I really, really enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game World Wonders. I've probably called this Monuments a few times, I apologize, but you got it, by Arcane Wonders. If you're interested in picking up the game, there's a link down below in the description. For those of you who enjoy tile placement style games, city skyline, sim city, sim build your own Roman-esque, Greco-Roman Colosseum game, this is gonna be up your alley. Uh, you can also go ahead and if you appreciate us, if you love us, if you've seen more than one of our videos maybe, consider subscribing. Hit that subscribe button, the bell notification button, so you can see more of our videos come out weekly. We do at least four videos a week and a live stream on Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. Okay guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to building some world wonders with you next time. Quite enjoyable, it's a little solitaire kind of feel game, but we're all competing as well. It's, it's great, it's, it's good.